Welcome back to Tucson, Arizona, site of the 2017 Pac-12 Beach Volleyball Championships at Bear Down Beach on the campus of the University of Arizona. Another contenders in matchup right now. The seven and six seeds squaring off the Washington Huskies versus the California Golden Bears. In the winner's bracket earlier today, top four seeds advanced. Holly, all went as planned. Yes, you see Arizona sweeping Cal 5-0. And UCLA will meet Arizona later in the winner's bracket, USC, Arizona State later. Meanwhile, we have another contenders match before we get back to the semis. And it's Washington and Cal. The winner of this will go on to face the winner of USC, Arizona State. Loser of this match goes home. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. I'm Anne Marie Anderson alongside a three time Beach Volleyball Olympian Holly McPeak. Holly, this is tough business. Team championship, it's win or go home. Washington and Cal, what should we, we should be looking for? Very competitive level of volleyball right now. Cal lost to Arizona, but Washington started out early. They beat Oregon, beat Utah, and they're ready to go. So I feel like Utah's, I mean, Washington's kind of played into it, and they're getting better as the day goes on. This is going to be a big challenge for Cal. Yeah, Cal had an injury suffered earlier this week as Mia Marino out. The first four pairs have changed. Only the fifth pair is the same pair that they were working with for much of the year. Mia Marino, part of the ones pair that matches up against the best pair from the other school, out. So that's a big shift. All new teams except for the fives. Big challenge for Cal, but the good news on their side, no scouting report on these new teams. Yep, and so we will start our attention and the action on court number one, where again, that is where Mia Marino had been playing. So with the shift, it's now Bryce Bark and Olivia Rodberg. They're facing Jones and Scambray of Washington. Really interesting, two indoor players for the Huskies who have been successful outdoor in part just because they are scrappy and skilled at the indoor game. Tia Scambray and Chrissy Jones grew up together. They've been playing together since they were 12 and both fantastic all-around indoor players who've grown up playing some beach. Chrissy Jones was part of the USA high performance program all through high school. She knows how to play this game. Tia Scambray has some experience. Look at the bounce here. If you're Bryce Bark, you have to get on the ball. If it's tight, you need to reach over and grab that and affect the hitter more as a blocker. Well, and the thing that impressed me watching this morning's matches that our colleagues Kevin Barnett and Kevin Wong called is that Jones and Scambray lost the first set to UCLA's ones, the McNamara's, 21-12. They made massive adjustments, and in the second set, went to extra points, 24-22. And that's and that's a good in-match adjustment. That comes with experience, being able to make those shifts mid-match. Double elimination, five matches of pairs. The best three of five win the match or the duel. All five matches play at the same time to conclusion. First two sets to 21, you must win by two. If a third set is necessary, it's to 15 points. Again, must win by two points. And so this is a team format. Each individual match counts as one point. It does not matter what pair you're on. If you're the ones team, which is your best team, or the fives team, it still counts as one point. You could lose the first and second pairs, win three, four, five, win the duel and move on. It really promotes depth, this kind of a scoring system. You have to be strong one through five in order to compete. You can't just be strong at the top. And, and that's how they're choosing to grow this sport by scoring it this way. As you look at Olivia Rodberg serving, that's one of the things that Cal head coach Megan Schmidt has been really proud of with her team. She says now we're, we have depth one through five that we can legitimately count on each pair impact. The, pair, the five pair for Cal has been some of their most successful, Neff and Gustafson. Yes, uh, you know, the Cal Volleyball Program has a lot of experienced beach players now. For the first time, Olivia Rogberg came in. She's now a sophomore. She grew up in Manhattan Beach. She was a multi-sport athlete, um, trained with elite beach volleyball. She's got some good experience, and she's able as a sophomore to step in to that pair's one spot and do a good job for Cal. Nice flat floater that's just blowing away from Tia Scambray down the line. Beautiful. 
pop on that serve from Olivia Rodberg. There you see Megan Schmidt talking with her team. Rodberg back to serve, but yet another partner for Bryce Bark. Bryce Bark has played at the twos, the ones. In 2015, she didn't see a serve all year. When she was partnered with Schultz, she's one of those players that has been with an injured athlete because she just has a great attitude saying, hey, I got a new partner. I know they need to rely on me. Bryce Bark is long. She's not super huge, but she's long and she has nice ball control and she sets. So you see her trying to battle against Chrissy Jones. Chrissy Jones is way over the net. You have to be able to hit around her and challenge her at the net up those balls. Yeah, Chrissy Jones is not to be played with at the net. She grew up in the high performance program. She is just a skilled athlete, and you can tell her mode is dominate always. And she's also on the side of the net where the ball is blowing tight, so it's an advantage for the blocker, not the hitter. Chrissy Jones and these Huskies have seen a lot of success during their time in the indoor program. And as a result, Holly, how much of that can transfer to the outside? Just the swagger. Well, the confidence from training and at the highest level and understanding the game, the way the Washington indoor volleyball program is run, they're so, um, they're so focused on detail. And, and that kind of work really pays off whatever you do. If you're focused on detail and getting better every contact, that helps on the beach too. That ball just turns right, right at the last second against Olivia Rodberg. Up at the net, trying to turn it away. Scambray, who came in, had a very successful freshman year at Washington. Kind of caused a bit of a seismic shift there, and you got to see how talented that Husky team was with different people playing in different positions. Cassie Strickland went from outside hitter to libero as well. Right now, Cal on what you would call the bad side, really struggling to side out in Washington, taking advantage of being on that good side. That time, Tia Scambray tries to go high line, missing that ball long. Making Scambray handle that first ball, Jones up. Trouble play, and again, Scambray just keeping it simple, putting it to the back. Good touches by Cal on the defensive side, but unable to control it. Let's see if they can do a better job with the wind in their face. Tia Scambray and Chrissy Jones definitely have the size advantage at the net. Jones and Scambray, a four-point lead in set number one. serve into that tight top net cord. We've been seeing a lot of balls hit that ball, that top net cord and bounce back instead of tri trickle over. Trying to decide whether or not she was going to pull off the net was Bryce Bark. But Bryce Bark stayed and forced Scambray out of bounds. Of course, this is just one of five matches going on right now. The two pairs, Gaffney and Stepanoff, a two-point lead over July and Schwan of Washington. Strickland and DeHoog, three-point lead over Campbell and Anderson in three pairs. Hard to leave the net open for players like Chrissy Jones and Tia Scambray. They see the court well. They want to hit the ball. So you want to put a block up in front of them when possible. Chrissy Jones and Tia Scamray, you talked about how they went far back. Good friends since they were 12 years old. Chrissy Jones, a bit of a jokester, said, hey, look, Tia Scambray can take a joke. I once gave her a rotten egg flavored jelly bean and told her it was buttered popcorn. She got over it. That's good friends. Well, she almost got sick. You forgot to say that part. <laughs> Almost doesn't count except for horseshoes and hand grenades, right? Correct. Big <laughs> swing by Olivia Rodberg. Jonathan Winder, the head coach of Washington, also works on the indoor team alongside Keegan Cook, a brilliant indoor coach. Washington just building a dynasty uh, up there on both sides, devoted to their athletic programs. The, wa the Washington Volleyball Program trying to balance the indoor and the beach because of all these athletes come from the indoor game except for a couple and you know you have to practice indoor during the spring so they have a, only a 
five-week program, basically, where they train and compete in the sand, but they have the athletes to really compete at a high level. Yeah, and that's going to change a little bit next year in terms of the beach athletes versus indoor athletes. It was just kind of ironic that they didn't have any seniors really going to be available for the team from the indoor team to the beach. But next year, they got four seniors who are going to be beach only then. Won't have to worry about the indoor. Plus, they have five beach only players coming in. So, Jonathan Winder saying, we're going to have nine players available to train next January. And that's going to help them play at a much higher level. You see head coach Megan Schmidt from Cal, former indoor player at Cal. And she also is a volunteer assistant for the beach program at Loyola Marymount under Tom Black. Yeah, she was a DS and libero on the indoor team. Went to two Final Four, so has known some success there under head coach Rich Feller, who is retired, just announced his retirement earlier this year, we, or earlier this week, and we wish Rich Feller the best. Rich Feller, class act, always fun to work with, full of good information, and supportive of what we do. We're trying to cover the sport, promote the sport, and he made our job easier. Yeah, just sit in his office and talk volley with him. He's a hugely successful coach at Cal and at Colorado State. Before that, always a gentleman, so Rich Feller will be missed. How about that? Two Bay Area legendary coaches, John Dunning and Rich Feller, both retiring in the same year. Two incredibly gracious men. That time, Bryce Bark trying to find that deep corner. Good idea, just not executed correctly. This is the side of the court that Olivia Rodberg and Bryce Park really struggled with the first part of this set. That ball just hit a little bit long. I'd love to see Olivia Rodberg make the adjustment. She's got the ball control to pass that ball forward and run a back set, move the big block of Chrissy Jones if possible. Jones up at the net. They go far away from her, give Scambray plenty of time to get there. No one on, off the top of the tape. Team split blocking, sometimes Jones, sometimes it's Scambray. Is that harder to defend against? Uh, a or to attack bit. against? You don't know what to expect. Both players can play at the net or back. This time, Bryce Bark goes with her favorite shot, that cross court cut shot. Chrissy Jones was cheating on defense and unable to get that ball. Yeah, okay. explain cheating for people that don't know the game, what you mean by that. Well, you want to be balanced. You want to be in your starting position, take your first responsibility, but then be able to react if the ball goes somewhere else. You can't just stand there or anticipate a certain shot. You have to see the ball and then go get it. But you have to start in the right spot instead of creeping one way or another. Right, cheating in the sense means creeping, not cheating, uh, illegally playing the rules. Correct. Just in case somebody's yeah, not I apologize familiar. if that's how it sounded. No, not to me, but I just want to make sure nobody... Calls you an accuser. It's just leaning one way or the other, maybe leaving early. Scambray, meanwhile, good swing. Good transition set by Chrissy Jones, pushing her partner Tia Scambray up to the net. That's what you want to do. You want to dig, dig balls and turn them into points. Both of them, Scambray and Chrissy Jones, powerful offensive players. Significant lead for Jones and Scambray. They have come out and gone after Abark and Rodberg. Let's check out the other action going on here at Bear Down Beach. Let's go over to the fives, where Crabtree and Chalmers are facing the most experienced pair for Cal. Neff and Gustafson, very successful, are struggling against Cab Crabtree and Chalmers, down by five. Bridget Gustafson back to serve number 24 with her partner Taya Neff at the net. They are the one pair for Cal that is stuck together. They've had a lot of success this season. Well, and one of the things that the Pac-12 Network always supports is the student athlete. And I don't know that there's a pair that's more impressive academically than Gustafson and Knapp. In terms of what they're trying to do, Gustafson pre-med, trying to, she's a, part of the chairman, the board for the foundation, the Swifty Foundation for Pediatric Brain Cancer Research. Her, bro her twin brother passed away from pediatric cancer a couple of years ago, and Tay and Neff, just incredible. She's going to be interning this summer. She's trying to decide, should she intern for the World Health Organization or the UN? 
her passions, women's reproductive rights, and refugee settlement. Incredible. No, I don't enough. The passion for politics and trying to make the world a better place, both these athletes, the, the piece you did on Bridget Gustafson, I think I spent an hour in my room crying. I have a twin brother, so that hit home. I think it would hit home for anybody, but that in particular, there's a bond between twins, and it just broke my heart. Yeah, it's, it's worth seeing if you can check it out because the Gustafson family uh, told the story so eloquently of Michael Gustafson, Bridget's a twin brother. Um, please check it out and then uh, check out their foundation as well, the Swifty Foundation. Both of those players, just incredible um, minds as well on them. Crabtree and Chalmers, meanwhile, from Washington, the only beach-only pair for the Huskies. They are came out, tried out, and made the squad. But both have beach volleyball backgrounds. Lindsay Chalmers grew up in Manhattan Beach. She comes from a long lineage of volleyball family. I actually played with her aunt, who's Cami Chirelli. Um, she trained with Elite Beach Volleyball. She's got beach experience. She got into school and tried out for the team and made it. And then Anna Crabtree has been a local beach player on the scene. And both are really contributing as beach-only athletes. Set point for both the one and five pairs. On the left side of your screen, Jones and Scambray trying to take down Bark and Rodberg who fight off a set point. Right side of your screen, it's Crabtree and Chalmers trying to take the first set from Gustafson and Neff. Cal fighting off both set points. Lindsay Chalmers almost ran that ball down for Washington. Now they have a side out opportunity at pair fives to win this first set for Washington. Yep, left side of your screen, Chrissy Jones, a little shot. And then patrolling the net, Jones touches, Scambray up. On left side, Scambray takes a huge swing. And on the left side, Jones and Scambray win the first set. On the right side of your screen, still in action as Gustafson and Neff will not go down easy. Washington needs to be careful at the pair of fives on court five. You don't want to let Cal tie it up and get that momentum switching to that good side. You want to finish it off as soon as you can. Now, Bridget Gustafson had a scholarship waiting for her at Grand Canyon University for the beach team. Decided to go to Cal instead, and Crabtree and Chalmers take set number one. That's a big win for Lindsay Chalmers and Anna Crabtree for Washington to win that first set. Hey, let's take a look at the action on court at number four. Ia Lindahl, Madison Duick of Cal versus Wade and McPherson of Washington. And it is set point. Have a scramble play for both teams. Out of a bounds. And so it is a win for Washington's fours. Wade and McPherson. Shane McPherson grew up playing the beach game at Alki Beach in Seattle and grew up with a court in her backyard. She's got a slight advantage heading into this <laughs> match. But Ian Lindahl on the other side of the net for Cal has grown up playing the beach game as well. We'll pop in and take a look at court number two where Jonathan Winder, head coach of Washington, having a moment talking with Courtney Schwan and Destiny July. Another couple of great, impactful indoor players. Schwann, the Pac-12 Player of the Year. You talk about it. We were sitting in the hotel watching these matches all day long, and the player that has impressed me the most or the be biggest surprise is Courtney Schwann. It's six foot one. She's the Pac-12 Player of the Year indoors. But what she's doing on the court, her court vision, her reads on the game, um, she's been really fun to watch on the beach. Set point for July and Schwann. Washington approaching winning the first set on all five courts. Schwan. No one on. Just smart. Resists the urge to pound. Instead gets the set win. Well, the set wasn't in a great location, but it's the decision not to try and hammer that and to use a roll shot that I like by Courtney Schwan. 
Washington controlling set one. This is how organized it is here. Teams playing left and right. Winner stays. You're watching Pack Network. Pac-12 Beach Volleyball is brought to you by State Farm. Get to a better state. Beautiful day in Tucson. A great day to get Sandy. It is survive and advance in the contenders bracket. Washington won the first set in all five matches going on in this duel. We're going to rejoin the action here on court number two as July and Schwan won the first set and captured the first point of set number two. Patrol in the net does well there as Gaffney. Jessica Gaffney, number 30, the blocker on this team, and her partner Camille Stepanoff. They played together earlier in the season and have been reunited because of the injury. But Camille stepping off her challenge at 5'4 is siding out, and she's got a huge block on the other side of the net in Destiny July. But she's got a lot of fights. She runs around, digs a lot of balls, makes things happen. And she and Jessica Gaffney can score points with their defense. July, of course, going after the smaller player and gets the kill. If you're Camille Stepanoff, you have to hit away from the defender. The blocker is taking a certain area. You want to clear the block and go over the block. You see Destiny July blocking line. Go over her. Don't hit where the defender is unless you're hitting it with a lot of heat trying to beat her. But it's tough when you're 5'4". Your range is smaller. Now stepping off, it's been a lot of time with Bryce Bark, as you indicated. This pair kind of reunited recently. Jessica Gaffney, big at the net. She's six foot one from Temecula. She was at the University of San Francisco, transferred to Cal, plays indoor and beach, the only player for Cal who does both. Um, but she needs to make sure she's pressing over the net so the hitters from Washington can't beat her in the angles. There you see the challenge of this team of Gaffney and Stepanoff. And, and Camille Stepanoff knows this. Everybody serves her and puts all the pressure on her to side out. In terms of experience, Ed Cal with a bit of advantage in this matchup, even though they lost all the first sets because Megan Schmidt intentionally scheduled them tough. We'll check in on the other courts. Pair one, Bark and Rodberg leading by one over Jones and Scambray. The five pairs Crabtree and Chalmers took set number one, and they're leading set two over Gustafson and Neff. Megan Schmidt took her team. They had a lot of success in Northern California. She brought them down to Los Angeles and said, now we're going to get tested. They faced USC and UCLA, among some other teams out of conference and really got an opportunity to see the highest level. Jessica Gaffney using her size at the net, digging the ball off the touch, and able to get that ball off the cover, just hitting it deep where Courtney Schwann can't control it. Cal beat Washington during the regular season. July comes up with a big swing. Following that ball out, and July plays it. It's just kind of wild all over now. A lot of wind, and when that ball's sent really deep in the court, you really have to take care of that ball, and Washington didn't take care of it. Cal capitalizes. Gaffney. And there it is. Stepping off instead of serving. It's another Cal player, Lindahl, saying we always have to ask the refs whose serve it is because we get it wrong like one out of every five times. Out. July followed it all the way to the line. It's interesting. Camille Stepanoff's in the perfect place for Cal every time. But instead of overhand digging it, because this is a hard hit ball, you can overhand dig it, which is almost like a grab, and throw it up. She's putting her hands together, and it's a ricochet, and she's unable to control it. 
She needs to learn that overhand dig, and she'll have so many more digs in that position, especially with a big block like Jessica Gaffney in front of her. Well, the difference is significant, right? One is adding velocity to the ball in the ricochet that you just talked about. The Correct. other one in the grab. Grab is a slow control, gives your partner plenty of time to get there and you time to get a good approach for transition. Tied up at six apiece. Washington won the first set in all five pairs in the driver's seat early. This is survive and advance. Winner stays, loser done with the team competition. Beautiful ball control side out from Jessica Gaffney. A low set. She sees the opening. Doesn't have to crush it. Just high line over the block out of the reach of the defender Courtney Schwarm for Washington. Now this is the team competition. Uh, later this weekend there will be a pairs competition as well and Courtney Schwan will play with Cassie Strickland in the pairs competition. That's an interesting choice to not have them together here but have them together for the pairs. I think for the team he wants to spread the wealth and put a strong player kind of in each pair and that's probably why he did that. I'm not sure. Of course USC has really led the way with the pairs. We take a look at the ABCA pairs at champions. At Pepperdine got the first couple and then it was USC. Kirby Burnham and Stevie Robinson and Sarah Hughes success with no matter who she plays with. Kirby Burnham had two different titles with two different partners as well. And credit coach Anna Collier for USC. She coached three of those pairs. Yeah, it's it's really something to see. And there is no pairs competition within the NCAA championship. But USA Volleyball is having a pairs competition this year and the week after the NCAA championship. So you'll get to see some of the best pairs in the country play yet again, kind of bringing back the individual. And it's a very different way to approach it, Holly, when there's just you and your partner or when there's 10 players. You're right. It's less of a team sport. It's just a two-person. Your team is you and your partner. That's it. It's not the other four pairs representing a school. But you're st you still have your uniform on for representing your school. You're just two as opposed to 10. July, bounce in the ball. Washington takes the lead. Destiny, July number two in purple, known for her arm swing, both indoor and on the beach. They talk about the speed of her arm swing. Wow, when Washington needs to kill indoors, they call Destiny July. Well, and you and I can both recall, I mean, July, a sophomore right as her, in her freshman year, getting called upon in a critical match when there was an injury. July came in, received every serve, of course, because she was a freshman, and was incredibly impactful for Keegan Cook and the indoor Huskies. And the coaches talked about, she's wise beyond her years. She's mature. She's unafraid, which is a big thing when you're a freshman in the Pac-12 competing. It can be a little bit intimidating, but Destiny July is a super strong athlete and was not intimidated by that challenge at Washington. July trying to pass that ball. Kabil stepping off, hitting kind of awkward deep ball that Destiny July was unable to control. Camille Stepanoff's grandfather, George Stepanoff, in the CBVA Hall of Fame. Huge influence on the sport of beach volleyball. She and her whole family love the sport, and it's just part of her life growing up. That was a fantastic dig that Stepanoff had. Now setting in the wind. No one on. Win in the fiddle, go in the middle. Yeah, win in the fiddle. That deep middle, Camille Stepanov grew up playing the sport. She knows. Look at that one arm dig. Camille Stepanov goes horizontal, as Stein Metzger of UCLA would say. Look at that lift on the ball. I love it. One point lead for Gaffney and Stepanov after they dropped the first set to July and Schwan. A little bit better execution, and if Camille Stepanoff can side out at a little bit higher clip, they can really push July and Schwan into a third set. Owen Monroy, the volunteer assistant, talking with them now. He talks with his team a lot about growth versus fixed mindset throughout the whole team as we check in on other scores around the the matches today, meditation, visualization, that coach right there, Owen Monray is in charge of that. I love that. I think visualization is a big part 
of the game and improving and understanding what you're doing. I, a lot of these student athletes are visual learners. So if you're visualizing yourself doing something correctly or trying to learn a new skill, visualization helps get you there so much quicker. So I love that part of the coaching. You mentioned that uh, Megan Schmidt, the head coach, was at Royal Marymount for a while. Monroy was coaching at St. Mary's at that time, and so they were recruiting against each other. She said it's really nice to have us both be on the same side. Definitely, it's important to have coaches working with you that have the same types of goals as well. Cal team facing a little adversity. Man Marino and the ones pair suffered a back injury last weekend. It upended four of the five pairs. July and Schwan looking smooth. I love the drop by Jessica Gaffney in a perfect location. Just the decision on how she controls that ball is not the right one. She needs to get her hands there and grab it and control it. Staying up, and so Stefanoff just cuts. The ball's tight. Destiny July needs to go up and grab all of that ball. I don't care what her blocking assignment is. If she reaches over and grabs it, Camille Stefanoff has nowhere to go. But Stefanoff did a good job cutting that ball sharp. Little knuckles. Looking like a beach player is Courtney Schwan. Courtney Schwan is a beach player. Yep. And good heads up play. Runs to get her feet to the ball, sees the open court, and takes it. Gaffney, so smart. Love what Jessica Gaffney just did, getting her feet to the ball, not hammering it, hitting it to a perfect spot in the corner for the cow side out. Beach volleyball, it's different from indoors. Court vision, reading the game, reading what your opponents are doing, both defensively and offensively, are the biggest challenges on the beach. Taking a look at the four and five pairs as they are approaching the end of their sets. Crabtree and Chalmers are looking for a match win over Gustafson and Knapp on the right side of your screen. Swing with the block, waiting for it. Maddie Duick for Cal with the big block at the net. Melanie Wade, the big blocker, number five. And then Shane McPherson, the smaller player, who Cal will most likely challenge in serve-receive. No one on, sharpest of angles. Shane McPherson grew up playing the sport of beach volleyball. She's experienced and knows where to put that ball. On court number one, rolling on as Chrissy Jones and Tia Scambre sweep Cal in straight sets in the first point of the duel on the board as Jones and Scambre get it done for the Huskies. It's a very strong pair at ones for Washington. They start out a little slow, but that's a good win. Over to court number five, Gustafson and Neff trying to fight off Crabtree and Chalmers. This is much like the first set. I believe Washington had several match points, excuse me, set points in the first set. Now they have some opportunities to side out the ball to win the match. No, a deep line. Pulling off, Neff, first touch. Gustafson chasing it down. And it'll be another win for Washington as Crabtree and Chalmers put the second point of the duel on the board of the sweep over Gustafson and Neff. Lindsay Chalmers, Anna Crabtree, just fighters, just fighting it out, beating a very good team of Neff and Gustafson from Cal. One more point and Washington will send the Golden Bears out of the team competition. Survive and advance. And that does it as Washington, a 3-0 win over Cal. Taking a look at all the action here on Bear Down Beach.
Looked like the fours pair of Cal was that last third point to go to Washington. Yeah, a 21 to nine win for Wade and McPherson over Lindahl and Duick. So a win for Washington as the Huskies will advance. We will continue though with the action as the threes and twos are still playing here on court three. Cassie Strickland. Harley DeHood, number 12, the blocker at the net, so long, really affecting the Cal hitters, but both teams battling back and forth in that long rally. It's Washington team still struggling away as they are going to try to sharpen their skills. They will face the winner of USC Arizona State later tonight. Cal out of the team competition. Grace Campbell and Nicole Anderson, a new pair, trying to battle back. They've switched to the good side, down one point. Can they push a third set for Cal? 18 all. Three teams have been eliminated from this Pac-12 Beach Volleyball Tournament. Oregon, Cal, and Utah packing. Strickland, up, shows a little grace and tenderness away. Cassie Strickland likes to hammer the ball, but that time a little short shot over the block. Nicole Anderson there with the hustle play, just can't control it for Cal. Washington, the seven seed in this tournament. Knocking out six seed Cal. Strickland, nice set, left hand, goodbye. The difference in that rally, Cal had two opportunities to put the ball away and didn't terminate. They need to be aggressive. Washington, very aggressive on that last swing. Carly DeHoog has the size and uses it at 6-4 to get that 20th point for Washington. Popping in on the action on court number two. Schwan and July, Gaffney and Stepanoff fighting it out in second set. July and Schwan win, and that'll be the end of the match. If not, and Gaffney says no, it's tied up at 19 apiece. That ball was set a little bit inside, but in a good location in terms of tightness to the net. Jessica Gaffney gets her feet there and cranks that sharp angle for Cal. That's a tough spot when you're trying to rally back and push a third set to miss that serve and give the other team match point. And for July and Schwan, it is just that. Washington, the seven seed in this tournament, already knows they will advance and they will play the winner of USC, or the loser of USC, Arizona State. Stepping off, dug by July. July up, one on, off the top of the tape. Match points on both courts right now. Washington in the driver's seat. Courtney Schwann knows how to end a rally in her team's favor. Good two-set win at pair threes for Washington. The pair twos and the fours. And so it is a 5-0 sweep for Washington. Holly, this team has not played a lot this year. They're going to play the loser of USC Arizona State. What do they need to take from this match into that next one? Well, I feel like they just can be getting better every match in terms of using the win, playing smart, taking the opportunity to terminate when it's given to them. And I, you can tell they're excited. They're having fun. Their season's only five weeks long, and they are playing well at the right time. And so let's take a look at the contenders at bracket as you see the way it has evolved. Washington playing later tonight, the loser of USC Arizona State. Stanford going to play the losers of USC Arizona. And here's the winner's bracket coming up next. UCLA and Arizona, that's gonna be an incredible match. And then USC Arizona State, the teams can move on and play tomorrow or lose and play again today. Good chance for an upset, but the top two teams in the country we're gonna see next in the semifinals. 
UCLA and Arizona coming up next. We're going to go over to the winners of bracket. Is it going to be Bruins or Wildcats? The Huskies just dominated the Bears, a 5-0 win. They move on. We'll be back in 10 minutes. More action. Is this my car? 